China's officials have issued a final warning that has piqued the world's attention. The secrets underlying this grim deadline encompass cutting-edge technologies, new procedures, and a fight against a spreading desert that threatens to transform entire landscapes. Join us as we go into the core of China's effort to address the environmental disaster, studying the unique techniques they're using to confront the problem head-on. Scientists in China are fighting against the spread of deserts in northern and northwestern China. These deserts are growing because of things people do and changes in the climate. A big meeting called the Third Taklamakan Summit recently happened in Xinjiang, China. People who are really good at understanding deserts came to this meeting. They were not just from China, but also from places like Ethiopia and Nigeria. They all met to learn and see how to make the dry, barren areas in China better. Have you heard about the Taklamakan Desert? It's a huge piece of dry land, a bit smaller than Germany. Even though it's not as big as Africa's Sahara Desert, it's still really important. The Sahara Desert is huge, almost as big as the whole United States. The Sahara Desert is spreading and taking over more land, about 131 meters every day. If we don't do something, it will grow by 500 kilometers in just 10 years. Stopping the Sahara Desert from growing is super important. It doesn't just affect the countries around it, but also the ones below it. Some African countries have teamed up with China to fight against desert growth. They're learning from China's success in turning barren lands into healthy ones. They even made an agreement to work together on ways to stop deserts in Africa. There was a cool event called the Second Training Workshop. It was all about stopping desert growth from something called the Great Green Wall of Africa. This wall is not like the ones you see around cities. It's about stopping deserts from spreading in Africa. This event showed how China is helping countries that really need it to stop their lands from becoming deserts. China's mechanical sand control and biological sand fixation measures are particularly impressive. The Ecological Protection Forest projects on both sides of the desert highway have established a solid green barrier and the photovoltaic drip irrigation facilities not only reduce carbon emissions but also contain water. People use biodegradable blended nylon to make sand barriers, effectively curbing sand runoff, and the planting of pothos trees is combined with the harvesting of Cystanchus realizing a win-win situation for ecological benefits and economic benefits. These are very useful for African countries and worth promoting in the Sahel region of Africa," said Marceline Sanu, senior manager, secretariat of the Pan-African Great Green Wall. The Sahara Desert isn't the only problem in Africa. There are actually more than 20 deserts all over the continent. If we don't do something about them, by 2030, about two-thirds of the good land where we can grow crops might be lost. And get this, out of the 54 countries in Africa, about 46 are in danger of losing their land. The places in the most trouble are the Horn of Africa, the Kalahari in the south, and a region near the Sahara called the Sahel. This Sahel region covers 11 countries and is right on the edge of the big Sahara Desert. More than 500 million people live in these areas, and they're all at risk of losing their homes, crops, animals, and even the diverse plants and animals that live there. Jia Zhaozia, who works at the United Nations to fight against desert problems, explains that while deserts naturally change a bit because of the weather, people can also make them worse. People do things like cutting down trees, not farming the right way, and other harmful stuff that hurts the land. When people build their homes near deserts, sometimes the desert tries to spread and cover their houses or fields. This can be really bad, like when sand covers homes or destroys crops, she said. Think about the Horn of Africa area. There, they often have droughts, which are times when it doesn't rain enough. These droughts can make the land turn into desert. And guess what? Each new drought is even worse than the one before it. Lisa Lim Aken, who works with the group that looks at how people move because of the environment, says that a drought is when it doesn't rain enough for a long time. This can happen because of changes in the climate. When these droughts keep happening and get really strong, and they last for a long time, they can make life really hard for people. People might not have enough money anymore, and that can make them move to other places where they hope to find better jobs and lives. In places like Kenya, Ethiopia, and Nigeria, scientists are trying to learn from a desert in China called the Taklamakan Desert. This desert is in a place called Xinjiang, and it's the biggest dry area in China. Even though it's a big desert, it's not as big as the Sahara Desert in Africa.
For the past 10 years, there's been a special place where scientists from China and Africa work together. It's called the Sino-Africa Joint Research Center, and it's at a university in Kenya. These scientists are like a team, and they study lots of different things, like how to grow food better and how to take care of the plants and animals that live there. Since it started, the Sejoric, which gets money from China, has worked on 45 research projects together. They mostly focus on finding ways to deal with drought, which is when there's not enough rain for a long time. They also look at tiny things like bacteria and viruses, and how they affect plants and animals. China helps by giving special tools and things like seeds, tissues, and even DNA information. These researchers also look at maps and pictures taken from space to understand places like Kenya, Rwanda, and Somalia better. This helps them know what to do when something bad happens, like a disaster. China also gives money to some African countries to help them come up with good plans to stop deserts from spreading. But the details of how much money and where it goes are not easily found out. In West Africa, Nigeria is part of a cool project called the Great Green Wall. They're working on growing a really long line of plants like bushes and trees, about 8,000 kilometers long. They're doing this along the edge of the desert to stop it from spreading. This big plan called the Great Green Wall was decided by a bunch of African countries in 2007. They want to make 100 million hectares of land healthier again by 2030. This land stretches from Senegal to Mauritania all the way to Djibouti. The Sahara Desert is causing trouble in places like Kano State in Nigeria. It's really dry there, and that's not good for the environment and the people who live there. Last year, a group called the African Desertification Control Initiative, along with some smart folks from the Chinese Academy of Sciences, started a small project in a village called Guarme. This village is in a place called Kunchi, which is part of Kano State. The project is about taking care of a piece of sandy land, only about four hectares big. It's like a learning place for farmers. They can try out new things and learn skills that will help them fight against the desert. Umar Danladi, who is in charge of the project, says it's a small area, but it's really important for figuring out how to make things better. Danladi, who was part of the Taklamakan Desert Forum in June, says he learned really useful things there. He brings these ideas back home and shares them with the people in his village. But there's a problem. They need money to make those good ideas work. The ADCI project has its own set of challenges. One big issue is getting enough water. The workers have to go to another place to get water and bring it back to where they're growing the young trees. This is to make sure the trees survive and grow well. Right now, it's not clear if the Chinese will help upgrade the project with new technology. Now, let's talk about why deserts are growing and how it affects people and animals. People do things that are bad for the land, like having too many animals in one place or using too much water to grow crops. They also cut down trees and dig up the ground too much. All of this makes the land lose its goodness, and that's the main reason deserts are spreading. This is really bad for the environment, and it also affects the animals and people who live there. As more and more people come to live in an area, it puts extra stress on the land and the things that nature gives us, like water. This is because everyone needs food, a place to live, and other things to make their lives better. Imagine a puzzle. The more pieces you add, the harder it is to make everything fit together nicely. Denladi, who was part of the Taklamakan Desert Forum, talks about how these pressures on the land can lead to really serious problems. When deserts start taking over, it doesn't just affect the land and nature, it also affects the people and animals who live there. It's like a chain reaction. When the land gets worse, people might have to leave their homes and move to cities, which can cause big problems there. Cities might get too crowded, and things like buildings and roads might not be enough for everyone. Also, when land becomes desert, it can bring more sickness and fights. Patricia Combo, a UNCCD global land hero from Kenya, is known for planting trees and teaching students about taking care of nature. She thinks that droughts, which are times when it doesn't rain enough, are one of the most serious and upsetting things that happen to people. When there's a drought, it's really hard to find enough food and water. This can make people feel unsafe and worried because they have to compete with each other for the little resources that are left. It's a big challenge that humanity has to face and it makes life tough for many people. China has done some really smart things to stop deserts from spreading. One cool program they had is called the Conversion of Cropland to Forest Program, or CCFP. 
Instead of growing crops, they paid farmers to plant trees in their fields. This way, the land became a forest instead of being used for farming. In just 10 years, a huge area of land, about 9.3 million hectares, turned into forests. China is also working on something called the Three North Shelter Belt, or the Great Green Wall. This big project started in 1978 and won't be done until 2050. They're planting an incredible number of trees, more than 66 billion, along the border of the northern part of China where the desert is spreading. This will make the world's forests 10% bigger. The Great Green Wall covers a lot of places in northern China, about 13 provinces. It's like a shield that protects land where people live, where they farm, and where there's water. Jia, who knows a lot about this, says that China uses really clever technology to watch the sand dunes. They use special tubes made from natural materials that break down over time, and they fill these tubes with sand to make barriers. These barriers stop the sand from moving on to the restored land. They also plant different types of plants, like grasses and shrubs, to make a kind of wall between the desert and the areas they've fixed up. This way, the desert can't easily come back and take over the land again. In the past, they used basic methods with simple materials like straw and sticks. Now, they're using the power of the sun to help them. They have machines that run on solar energy to pump up groundwater from the earth. This water is used for things like drinking and also for giving the young trees a drink. To save as much water as possible, the communities in these areas came up with smart ideas. They stopped using things like sprinklers or flooding the fields when they farm. Instead, they use something called precision irrigation. That's all for today's video. If you find this video interesting, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel. Until next time, keep watching. Time, keep watching.